20. Page 21, we rise for Ms. Morla David. Something more. And now for something completely <sighs> different. I can Thank breathe. You. Thank you. 23. So we welcome in the bride with Lechado D. That's right. Which rhymes with 23. Um, I'm remembering again, this is. Oh, yeah. Let's go. 
for a moment as we allow the Shabbat, that Shabbat feeling to enter the Shabbos bride, the Shekhinah, the presence of God that we feel on Shabbat when we're together and welcome her saying, come my bride, Bowie Kala. Bowie
there's the Shabbos ride. She just came in. <laughs> um, we're on page 27. 27. <laughs> Mr. Koach, Cantor Silverberg, um, I could I could hear that you were in a, a Balkan band at one point. I could hear it in the voice. It was awesome. Was that in college or something? You were My last semester at Oklahoma. A Balkan, yeah. Balkan. Yeah. That's great. Second semester senior Comes project. in handy. Comes in handy. So this week and next Torah portions, Tazria and Mitzora are famously difficult ones to have for your bar and bat mitzvah sermon. It is all of the Torah of rashes and genital secretions and how they might change our spiritual status. I'm not going to get too into detail here, so don't worry. Um, a mitzora is a person who has tzora'at, which is a white flaky skin rash that covers a person, can even get onto their clothes and the walls of their house. Zorus, oh yeah, <laughs> maybe. Well, it means like troubles in different, okay. Um, first, a person notices a strange rash on their arm or face or stomach. They apply what ointments they have and to no avail, soon enough, reality sets in. It is tarat, a disease of the soul that cannot be cured with physical medicine. A Kohen or priest is brought to confirm and is in fact so. 
disoriented and frustrated, the person would make their way out of the camp wearing tattered clothing, looking unkempt. They're supposed to do all these things. And crying out, Tame, Tame, which means translated impure, impure, or unfit to serve in the temple, unfit. The person would then live outside of the camp and not come back until they're healed. And they cannot heal until they come to terms with what caused the wound to begin with. They're required to do the hard work. And we have many traditions that explain the cause of tzarat, lying for selfish needs, sexual immorality, false oaths, pride, stinginess. But most people hold that it was gossip that was causing people to have tzarat. Based on the story of Miriam, who spoke ill of her brother Moshe and got the same disease, many commentators believe that it was a kind of punishment for lashon hara, which means evil tongue. At that time, in isolation, it gave the infected person ample opportunities to self-reflect on how they've been speaking to others. The priests would also circulate among the people with Sarat, and so they were not only they were not only uh, medical advisors, but they were also psychological, spiritual advisors as well. Being, for, being away from others forced them to sit in silence and made them realize the power of words and made them yearn for community and connection with others. In this way, the punishment for evil gossip and slander was measure for measure. The person created discord and broke someone else away from their community with their speech, and so they were forced to be sent away and isolated themselves from the community. Upon returning to the community, they would first go to the Kohen to complete their purification they offer two, two turtle doves, two doves to the Kohen. Doves, which are very talkative birds. Actually, in Hebrew, the word is Yonah, which if you hear them, they go, Yonah, Yonah, Yonah. In, in Israel, they do. And they, brr -boom, brr -boom, brr -boom, and they talk a lot. So they represent the person who spoke a lot. The dove, which represents their negative speech, is slaughtered. Sorry. And the other dove, which represents the good words that they could be saying, in the future, that dove is set free to fly away like a peace dove. So to help us reflect on the power of words, I want to share with you this classic tale of a man named Shlomo who had a nasty problem. He talked too much about other people. He could not help himself. Whenever he heard a story about somebody, he knew something juicy or embarrassing. He just had to tell his friends. He loved the attention that he got, and it made him feel good when they laughed because of the way he told the story, and often he added some parts in for embellishment to make it funnier. Other than that, he was a good person. He kind of knew it was wrong, but he couldn't help himself. And anyway, most of the embarrassing things he said were true. One day, Shlomo found out something really weird but true about another person in town. I won't say what it was, because I don't speak Lashon Hara. Of course, he felt he had to share what he knew with his friends, who told to their friends, who told it to the people they knew. And this was before Twitter and, um, you know, TikTok and all that. Who told it to their wives, who spoke with their friends and their neighbors. And pretty soon the story went all around town until the man he was saying mean things about in the story found out. And that poor man ran to the rabbi of the town and he cried and complained and everybody knew that everyone knew his embarrassing thing about him, and now he wouldn't, they wouldn't even want to hang out with him. The rabbi knew it had to be Shlomo who started all of this, or at least Shlomo would know the person who started it. So he asked Shlomo to come to his house. And when Shlomo heard from the rabbi how awful this man felt, that everyone was making fun of him, he felt terrible, and he was really, really sorry. He didn't think it was such a big deal to tell this story because it was true. The rabbi sighed, Oi, Gavalt. True, not true, it makes no difference. You just can't tell bad stories about people. This is called Lashon Hara, and it's so bad it can destroy a person. Now Shlomo felt really bad and really sorry, so he asked the rabbi, what can I do to make it all better? I will do anything, anything, rabbi. The rabbi looked at him. There is one thing you can do. Do you have a feather pillow? You guys have heard this one. No, okay. Do you have a feather pillow in your house? Rabbi, I'm not poor. I have a whole bunch of feather pillows, but what do you want me to do, sell them? No, just bring me one. Shlomo was a little confused, but he returned a bit later to the rabbi with a nice 
fluffy, big feather pillow under his arm. The rabbi opened the window they were standing next to and handed Shlomo a knife. Now, Shlomo, cut it open. But rabbi, here in your study, it will make a mess. Do as I say. And the man cut the pillow. And a cloud of feathers came out, and they flew everywhere. They landed on the chairs and the bookcase and the clock, and they flew out the window uh, over the table into the tea cups and all throughout the town, whirling, swirling in the wind. The rabbi waited 10 minutes, stroking his beard patiently while Shlomo stood there, looking very confused. Then the rabbi said to Shlomo, now, bring me back all the feathers and stuff them back in your pillow. All of them, mind you. Not one feather can be missing, and then you can fix what you did. The man stared at the rabbi with his eyes wide in shock. That's impossible, rabbi. The, one, the ones here in the room I might get, most of them, but the ones that flew out the window are gone, rabbi. I, I can't do that. You know it. Yes, said the rabbi. That is how it is. Once an embarrassing story or a secret leaves your mouth, you do not know where it ends up. It flies on the wings of the wind. It spreads all over the town, and you can never get it back. The rabbi told Shlomo that he must say he is really sorry to the man he hurt, and he must also say sorry to the people he told the story to for making them part of this big thing. And he said that Shlomo had to learn the Torah of Lashon Hara, not, learning, not saying mean things about people, and he had to do it every day for a year and then come back to him. And that is what Shlomo did. And not only did he study about Lashon Hara, but he taught all of his friends and all of the people in the town about it. In fact, he became the town expert on Lashon Hara and how not to do it. And in the end, he became a very nice man who never told another mean or embarrassing story about someone ever again. Shabbat Shalom. 39, we rise for the Barchu. This is a prayer about the nighttime, especially with the eclipse, thinking about the one who is rolling the darkness before the light and the light before the darkness and the magic of the evening. Amen. Page 40, we open up and surrender to receive the Ahavat Olam, the everlasting source of love. Ahavat Olam, Beit Yisrael, Amcha Torah Mitzvot, Chukim Mishpatim, Otanu Limadeta.
Hashem, help us to sleep peacefully, awaken us to life, and especially spread your sukkah of shalom over Israel as they are bracing themselves right now. Please, may it be a peaceful Shabbat in Israel and Gaza. We rise, page forty-six. <laughs>
into our own prayer space as we stand before the Creator. And the prayers can begin on 47. Also bring your own prayers from your own heart.
week we remember the following congregants who have yard sites. Charles David Cohen, Lillian Finkelstein, Dr. John Metz, Rose Staniloff, Max Bayarski, Ruth Ann Gould, Jack Barry Mahoney, Louis Maisel, Betty Zuloff Aber, Dr. John Blumenthal, Cecilia Slater Cohen, Alan Ginsler, Isidore B. Kropsky, Donald Riley, Sarah Margulies Gladstone, Lauren Rosenberg, Celia Cohen Skoll, Abraham Moses Gladstone, George H. Hofstein, Abraham Lovitz, Anna Perlman Marks, Anna Witten Datnoff, Arthur Gould, Anna Golden Schwartz, Louis Alford, Jack Barry Levinson, Blanche Kushner Schleifer, and Samuel Skoll. Are there any names that were not mentioned that someone is saying Kaddish for this, yes. Zichrono Livracha, may his memory be a blessing. Yes. And those were Zichrono Livracha. Zichrono Livracha. And anybody back home? Just unmute. I see someone, yeah. Is that Basha? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, saying, I'm, I'm saying, saying Kaddish, Kaddish for Stan Greenberg. We lost you for a sec. I'm Say staying again? Kaddish for Stan Greenberg. Oh, Stan Greenberg, yes. Stan Greenberg just passed away 
Um, so we're we're thinking about him and his wife Kay, and that and son Aaron. They were just here last Saturday. I think they're coming tomorrow. I think so. If you see them, give them a hug. Okay, uh, Mourners Kaddish is on fifty eight. Yisgadal the Yisgadash Shemei Rapa. Amen. Bealma Divra Kiruse, Before we conclude, just an announcement here. Join us tomorrow morning for Torah study with Rabbi Aaron and Cantor Jessica Wolf Silverberg. Um, followed by Saturday morning services led by Cantor Sarah, Sarah, sorry, Jessica Silverberg, <laughs> Jessica Wolf Silverberg, and a delicious lunch and Q and A with the Cantor after lunch. Um, on Sunday at 9:15 a.m., we invite you for coffee and Q and A with Cantor Silverberg. At 9:45, there'll be a community music program and singing circle led by Cantor Silverberg in here. And uh, and particularly highlighting the voices and uh, voices of women uh, because do you want to say something about it? Sure. So I I have I do have a mic. Yes. Thank you. Um, so uh, part of a lot of what I do as a cantor is trying to adapt um, a lot of repertoire that was not written for me in mind, uh, and also continuing to uplift the voices um, and music of my fellow. Uh, female musicians and colleagues, and so all of the music we're going to be singing uh, Sunday morning is all written by women, and I've kind of called it tongue-in-cheek kolisha, mm -hmm. uh, and which particularly means the voice, the voice of, of, a woman. Of, of a woman, which is considered to be forbidden in some circles, yes. yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but also in recognition of the, in the holiday and thinking about the role that women had, and that this probably wouldn't have happened without all of them. Definitely so, not. They go. started the rebellion. They did. So that's on Sunday morning. And then also Sunday we have a healing meditation sit um, in the afternoon and 20s and 30s movie nights. You can, uh, they're ordering pizza and watching uh, Prince of Egypt. So Hot Moses will be on the screen. <laughs> Everyone's favorite. It's a good reason to be Jewish. You know, when you see that film, it's like, oh, yeah. I guess, there, nice. I, I guess there can be miracles. Yes. Thank God. Hallelujah. Okay. So um, also, okay. Join us Thursday, April 18th for Lunch and Learn. Friday the 19th for Kabbalah Shabbat, led by Kalman Slater, right here. And on Saturday the 20th for a baby naming in honor of the daughter of Becky Wasserman and Ben Travers. This will be a kiddish. And you can buy tickets now for our Pesach Seder second night, Tuesday, April 23rd. We're also selling chametz to Raul. So um, he'll be taking all of your keys and to your liquor cabinets and all that. Um, and so you can find a full schedule on our, our website. Um, as always, drop in for Mahjong on Wednesdays, Gamach cooking, um, place an order from Valerie's Kitchen and more, and check it out all on the website. And so now we're going to conclude. Um, we, we change it up here. We don't always end with the same one. But I think today we're going to go traditional, which, you know, why not? Once in a while, right? What, what is the traditional prayer to say at the end of the service on Friday night? So it is Yigzal, but I will, but speaking of tradition and not always doing the same thing, uh, I became mostly involved in Jewish life when I was in college, and I thought for the longest time it was a really a tradition that at the end of services, the 
Kaha got to vote if you were doing Yigdal or Adon Olam. <laughs> uh, I, I, I didn't know that this was not actually a Maybe thing. Maybe we should carry that on. That uh, I think it's a, it's a fun tradition, but yeah. in addition, I also used to think services always had to end with if I had a hammer. Uh, so... <laughs> goes back more, to more, Sinai, more, Mount Sinai. More, exactly, yeah. exactly. More about that tomorrow. But Page all right, 62. These are the 13 principles of faith that were uh, elucidated by Maimonides and his students. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, we're going to finish it off with some wine and fala in the lobby there. So join us, please. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Okay.